message is important tonight. I saw something in the scripture I think I'd never seen before. And I trust God will help us. And it's from an old familiar verse of scripture that all of you probably can quote. In St. Matthew's Gospel, the fifth chapter, and the thirteenth verse. St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, verse 13, Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is henceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden underfoot of men. I said the same thing about the light of the world. Ye are the light of the world, but I mainly want to stick with the salt. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his precious word. I marvel at this verse that Jesus didn't say you're the salt of Israel. He said you're the salt of the world. That included the whole world. He said, now he left that little group and he said, now you're the salt. And if the world turned rotten, it's your fault. Salt is a preservative. I visited on a farm down in Virginia where the farmer took me to, to the shed where they cured hams with salt and he showed me one, showed me one, he said, I can throw that ham out on the ground and he said, even the flies won't bother. If society, and I want to ask you a question, here's the thing that startled me, if society has gone rotten, whose fault is it? It's not the government's, the government's not salt. You can't say, well, the government ought to pass laws and do this. And the, go it's, the government is not the salt. The church is the salt. And if society has gone rotten, then who, whose fault is it? I remember hearing Dr. Paul Rees say, preach years ago, and he made this statement, and I've mentioned it here before. He said, the president of the United States dramatizes the spiritual condition of the country. Now, I want you to get that. He's the president of the United States. He said, whatever he see him doing, he's dramatizing, and he'll do what the spiritual condition of the country is. Dr. Paul Reese said that. Now, we look at the conditions of the world today. I look at the conditions of our society, and I have to ask the question, where's the soul? Things have turned rotten. Oh, we look at all how awful this is happening. This is happening. We name it down the line. Crime and wickedness and vileness and, and all that's going on. Where's the salt? That's what I want to know. Jesus said that if we're the salt, then the, the fault must be with us and not the government. Look at drunkenness on our highways. Nearly 50,000 deaths a year. Do you know that at one time... Our country passed laws and prohibited selling of liquor. But do you know, I want you to know something else. Do you know that it was the Christians who repealed it? Come on, now you stick with me. Where's the saw? It was the Christians who stuck, who repealed it. And you know what the, you know what the reason? They said it'll give us jobs. And they voted for jobs. And they voted for 50,000 deaths on the highways to get themselves jobs, where's the salt? That's what I want to know. So it was the Christians said, we, we, want, we want more jobs, and they voted for the repeal of the 18th Amendment and said, we'll sell liquor to get us jobs. The Christians did that. And it cost the government millions of dollars to take care of damages done by drunkenness and violence in homes and poverty in families and deaths on highways. The Christians voted that in. Where's the salt? Look at abortion. Millions of babies murdered every year uh, because of this. And uh, you can, uh, somebody was pointing out, you can kill us, you can kill us, uh, I mean, don't kill a spotted owl or a golden eagle. One man who killed a golden eagle put in prison for 20 years. But you kill a man, you might be out in nine months and not even have to go to prison at all. Where is the salt in our country? It's the church that changes society. It's the church that abolished 
child labor laws. It's the church that started hospitals. It's the church that started education. It's the church that started orphanages. The church was the salt. It's the church that has changed society. And if we have lost our salt, and as Jesus said, it's good for nothing to be cast out. Are we to be cast out? I think of Pat Robertson a while back ran for president of the United States. You know what he said? He said, if the Christians would vote for me, I'd be president. That's the Christians. But he soon found out the Christians wouldn't vote for him. And he was surprised, so he dropped out of the race. He said, well, Brother Morgan, maybe he wouldn't have made a good president. I want to tell you something. God can make any man a good president. If he'll do what Solomon did, get on his knees and say, God, I'm a child. I don't know how to go in or how to come out. I don't know how to rule this great people of yours. Well, you'll give me the wisdom and God gave it to him, made him the wisest man that ever lived. And God said in his word, ask of me wisdom and I'll give it to you. He'll give any man wisdom. I don't care who he is. If he'll tell God he doesn't know how to be president. And if the people will pray for him. Every Christian ought to vote for a godly president. Now, dear ones, I want you say, well, I want to vote for a man who's a good president. I want to vote for a man who's a godly man. Do you know that you say, well, we want somebody to be, make us prosperous. Do you know that it's God who makes a country prosperous? God said in his word, it's the God, God that can make a man wealthy. And God's the one who makes a nation prosperous. What is America is prospered because of our godly forefathers. And it isn't any political party, Republican or Democrat, that's going to make this country prosperous. It's going to be God or not. They came, our early forefathers came to America to worship God, and that's why God made this country prosperous. And people today want to put God out of the government. It's an amazing thing to me. You know, Bob, well, the Lord's Prayer says, pray that the, God's, the kingdom of God will come on earth as it is in heaven. What it ought to be, the kingdom of God ought to come down to this earth and get into the government. It ought to be the kingdom of God running the government. Look at America today. Prosperity can disappear overnight. When will we learn that? Do you know that prosperity isn't worth a thing? I know, I lived in the last depression when millionaires were made paupers overnight. And millions, I mean, not millions, I don't know how many millionaires committed suicide overnight because their wealth was gone overnight. God can do that. It can happen in America again. Look at the history of Israel. It was God that made them prosperous. And then it was God who took it away. It was God who sold them into the hands of their enemies. God ruled that nation. And I want you to know that God will do the same thing with America if we'll put God first, seek him first, put the kingdom of God first, and get the kingdom of God into the kingdoms of this world, and then they'll be ruled by Jesus. I'm trusting in the next election that we'll vote for a man who stands for God, and God will be the one who'll make this country prosperous or not. The church is the salt. And if we've lost our saltiness, God said it's worth nothing but to be cast out. God have mercy on us. I think of Frank and Graham. We've been, I told you before, we've been reading the book of Frank and Graham, Billy Graham's son. And what salt that one young man's been to the world. If you know, familiar with the Samaritan's person, uh, Franklin goes into every, any area of the world, anywhere that there's a need, he goes in there. Doesn't make any difference who they are, what country of the world. And uh, he was telling about going into one place where they, uh, I forget the name of the country, but this, where there were uh, Islamic refugees. A whole area of refugees. And he'd heard how bad it was and he went in there to find out he saw there was a great need and he took in doctors and, uh, and nurses and food, but he won't give them food to the government. He takes it in himself with one privilege, give us the privilege to preach the gospel and we'll give the food to the poor. 
And he went into one Islamic refugee camp where there are many refugees and began to distribute the food and preach the gospel. Everyone had the, past, had the privilege to preach the gospel. The doctors, everybody preached. The doctors preached. Everybody preached. Everyone who was there preached the gospel as they distributed food. And what happened? The Islamic people turned out and said, what is this? They said, our Islamic people, other countries, have not helped us a bit and these Christians are helping us? Salt? They said here, and many of them came to Jesus Christ because of the salt. When their own countries wouldn't help them, but the Christians would. Turn around and help them. So, he goes into places where they need it and takes the salt there. Now, Look at Billy Graham. Only God knows how much criticism that dear man has had when he was called to go preach in Russia. Loads of people thought he was making a mistake, he was compromising, he shouldn't go over there. If he did go, he ought to go over there and show them how wrong communism is and speak up for, speak up for capitalism. He ought to go over there and really, really tell them. Doesn't that sound like we'll really tell them? He was speaking to one group of Russians and they got up, had a speaker before Billy Graham got up and he told the wonders of communism and he expected Billy to get up and refute it and Billy never got up and said one thing against communism, told him how being on a farm down in Kentucky, how uh, he was growing up as a boy and how Jesus came into his heart and changed his life. I'll tell you, the salt began to work. And they began to wonder, what is this thing? We want to know what it is. And the, they could see the communist leaders beginning to melt under the salt. And afterwards begin to come to him afterwards and say, we want to know more about this thing of Christianity. What is this? The salt melted them down. He didn't fight against it and show them the wonders or the harm of communism, but he showed them what Christianity, what Christ could do, changed his life and he can change yours. And they wanted to know. He said, we want to know what this is. And they came to him afterwards and said, tell us more about this Christ. Salt. So, I was reading one thing here, I think I had in here, is when I, I think it was Bill Franklin said in one of his books, he was talking about this book he had written, he said, Daddy was one of the few from the West in those days to go and preach the gospel in the heart of a communist world. And President Gerald Ford said of Daddy's involvement, there's no doubt that Billy Graham on his many visits to Eastern Europe and Soviet Union has lighted the flame. One man took salt wherever he went. He didn't down anybody or any other nation or any other religious thing, but he took salt, the preservative. And we are the salt of the earth. May God have mercy. The Lord's Prayer, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Oh, may God help us to get to the kingdom of God. We were singing about the kingdom of peace. That's what the world needs, but we're the salt. And they want to see that in our hearts, our lives. And if, 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 the, if the society is not preserved, it's our fault. Not at, but don't blame the government. I don't care who the president is. He's not going to go against, he's not going to overcome this. He'll do what we do. He'll do what the salt says.